I'm Jonathan Larson with TYT Investigates, and for eight years, the biggest scandal in Pete Buttigieg's history as mayor of South Bend was his handling of the case of his black uh, police chief, Daryl Boykins, the city's first black police chief, who was removed from that position by Pete Buttigieg within three months in office. Some attention was paid at the time to the fact that Pete Buttigieg, Pete Buttigieg also replaced his black fire chief, Howard Buchanan, uh, around the same time. However, when that happened, the local media reported that Chief Buchanan had simply decided to retire. Recently, the Associated Press reported that there's more to it than that, that Chief Buchanan actually wanted to stay on. So today, here in South Bend, I wanted to speak with Howard Buchanan, who has agreed to speak with me. Hello, Howard. Hi, how are you, Jonathan? I'm good, how are you? Good, I'm well, thank you for asking. Thank you, thank you for saying yes. <laughs> and um, so folks know you and I have spoken before, we talked a little bit about what we would talk about now, yeah. so that's why I know, I'm going to know things. Okay. So um, let's start with, um, it is technically true that you retired, right? You, you actually filed the paperwork, I, I think in 2009, do I have that right? That's correct. So yeah. tell me, what was going through your head why you filed for retirement in 2009? Well, um, the mayor, Steve Lickey, he chose not to run. So um, at that time, uh, I waited to three years. And in my third, three years, I put my retirement and three years I retired. That would give me the part that when he actually left, there was going to be a new mayor. Okay, so normally every, when you retire, I'm retiring in January. I decided I was going to retire in February. January being when the new mayor takes when office. When the new mayor takes off office. And I thought I would stay one more month instead of leaving in January, just in case whoever the new mayor would be might want to keep me as fire chief. So I decided to just put my, my, my retirement off until February the 1st of 2012. That would be my, my date. So that's what I did. So... So you put that in, mm -hmm. not necessarily thinking that you definitely would want to step down, but depending on your relationship with whoever the new mayor would be, that would give you the option. You would have already set the wheels in motion for that. But it was also the kind of thing that you could retract very easily in order to stay on if things worked out. That's correct. Yeah. I didn't have to retire. I mean, I could have continued to stay. Um, my thought was if I didn't retain my position. I haven't fought a fire or in 20 years, you know, so I didn't think that that was my time had come to you know, just step or step away. If he didn't, uh, whoever the new mayor would be, wouldn't, wouldn't keep me, then it's time for me to retire. And so that was, that was to take effect, as you said, February 1st, 2012. Mm -hmm. The campaign itself was in 2011, of course. That's correct. Yes. There was the mayoral primary, which I believe the vote was in early May, yes. and then, of course, the general election in November. That's correct. Walk us through your involvement in the Buttigieg campaign, in the mayoral campaign at the time. Uh, at, the t at the time, um, we uh, most of the chiefs got together and was saying because, say, for instance, if I were ready to retire, there were still other chiefs that had less time that wasn't in the in a retiring stage. So our thought was let's get on the right um the white wa the right wagon that we would be able that they would be able to stay on or even if i could if the chief stayed i mean if the mayor wanted to keep me we could all stay where we are in our same positions that w that we were in so we decided to uh go with buddha judge so the idea being that that essentially job preservation mm -hmm. was driving a, a a large portion of your thinking about who do we want to get behind? Who do we want to get behind? Well, the, 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 excuse me, the union always have, have a fundraiser every year in January. And it, uh, it's, um, it's, um, uh, more or less like, um, uh, every year they do it just so when they, people retire, um, they have a retirement party and pr tickets are low and all the beverages are free and everything like that. So they have a, a, a smoker in January, every year in January to, to help the proceeds go through that. Well, I was there and- This is 2011. This is 2011. And I was there and um, I happened to overhear some firefighters talk with one, one mayoral candidate, you know, talking about that he was gonna run for mayor and uh, it was, it, they just kind of clustered around him and like joining in on him and just saying, yeah, we need to get, we need to get them out of there. We need to get them out of there. We need new life and new stuff like that. And I was just like, wow, I said, okay. 
them so, being you yeah. and some of your chiefs. Some of my chiefs, yeah. So they were they were explicitly saying to the mayoral the other mayoral candidate, mm -hmm. not Buttigieg, yes. uh, if you win, we we're we want you to take out Buchanan. Right. And it's, possibly some of his top yeah, people as more well. More or less all of them, probably. That that's how it usually it goes, yeah. I see. Yeah. So at that time I got everybody together and I told them what I heard. I said, if we want to stay in these positions, we got to get on the right person. But definitely, we can't accept and work with this gentleman because he's already, <laughs> his mind is already made up. He's going to get all, of out of, all of us out of here. So we started working and we said, let's go with uh, Pete Buttigieg. And I said, okay. So we got with him and talked with him. We met when, with him. When was this, roughly? Um, it had to be sometime in right after that, February. Of 2011, so it this is been, this is this is still in the primary. Still in primaries, yeah. And this is very soon after he had actually officially announced. Yes, yeah, absolutely, okay. yeah. And so we got together, we met with them, uh, some of the firefighters, uh, the chiefs that we met with them, and um, decided that that we talk with them, and yeah, okay, and we we will go with you know we would assist you in trying to get you uh, uh, into the mayor position of everything that we can do to help you, excuse me, get uh, elected. And did he say anything to you and your top people about his interest in keeping you on? No, no, that was never discussed. No, we never, we never actually talked about uh, about who was what because it's the all the understanding is if you if we think that if if he keeps me, everybody else stays. If he doesn't keep me, then it's jeopardy that everybody could mm -hmm. lose their position, and whoever the next chief could be can either keep him or. Bring in his own bring people, in his own his people, or own. people around. Yes, absolutely. But your your expectation was that you at least had a better chance of keeping the position with Buttigieg. Yeah, that's a fair. Ab absolutely. Okay. Yeah. So would. yeah, go ahead. So yeah, so um, we we met at a couple of restaurants. Um, uh, one of my f firefighters that has a, a restaurant. That's one of the one of our assistant chiefs at the time, and we met there and. Um, we met there a couple of times um, and just trying to get our all our ducks in a row and how to help him or we can do maneuver him and you know stuff like that. So um, that's that's when um, 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 a gentleman always asked one is is the chief of staff would always ask me. This is Mike Schmuel. Mike Schmuel, are you going to retire? How are you going to retire? And I always say I don't know. I don't know. I haven't made our mind yet. Yeah, I haven't made our mind yet. What time say. period roughly are you talking about right now? Um, this was. This was after he won the primaries. So this would have been was, heading into the summer of 2011. Yeah, going into the summer of 2011. Yeah, this was after the primary. He had won the primaries, and we were still trying to get things together for the election in November. Um, and, and we had several meetings, and he would always ask me that same question. And I want to I want to follow up on that, but mm -hmm. you you said something to me the the first time we spoke about there being people. And I, if I remember correctly, you meant specifically black people, people in the South Bend black community who got behind Buttigieg because you were. Exactly. And vice versa. They, they assumed that meant he was on your camp as well. Right. Because when I would talk to people, well, what is that going to do for you, Howard? What does it do for you? I said, well, if, if he wins, that's a possibility I can remain chief. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, then they, they gathered around and, and they said, okay, we're going to support him. We're going to support him. We want you to, you know, to remain as chief. So... That's a lot of people um, in the in the in the black community was was supporting just for for that reason there. And so there was the union, which mm -hmm. obviously has the union membership. Yes. And they they and they ended up endorsing Buttigieg. Mm -hmm. And ironically, the union structurally is adversarial with the chief, yes. right? Because you guys got to fight over yeah. the stuff you contracts and other things. Yeah. But you also were on board with Buttigieg, and your even though you don't have an official endorsement the way the union does, mm -hmm. your support, mm -hmm. you're saying, meant something in the community. Yes, absolutely. And then too, you have to think about Daryl. I mean, Daryl, the Black Fire Police Chief. Daryl Borkins. Black, Dora Borkins. Yeah. And same thing. He's going to keep Daryl as chief. He's going to keep me as chief. Wow, this is still good. I mean, you know, this is this is our thought. That if everything went the way that we wanted to, and he we're supporting him, he he'll probably keep us both. Then you know that's in our mind. Not that it's in stone that is actually what he would actually do it, but in our mind, he didn't give us no indication that he wasn't. 
but he didn't give me the education that it was either. Right. So, right. Um, but you know, that's that's just the way that the politics plays too. That you and so, um, at, at I assume throughout you were still open to the idea of staying on if Buddha Judge would keep you. Absolutely. But Absolutely. so let's get back then to uh, Mike Schmuel repeatedly mm -hmm. asking you, "Are you going to retire? Are you going to retire?" Mm -hmm. So, in that sense. He was, I would assume they know, they knew, but tell me if I'm wrong, that you had formally put in for retirement. Yes. yes. So when he says, are you going to retire, he's, he's kind of acknowledging that your formal notice of retirement wasn't necessarily really a binding thing. Absolutely. He, they knew that I could retract it at any time. That because I said I'm going to retire doesn't mean I had to retire. I could still, I could have stayed. I mean, I still could stay. And did you have a sense when he was asking you repeatedly you said mm -hmm. why he kept asking you no i do not know why and i never asked why you keep asking me that i never did that i never did that no. i mean f to be fair if you're preparing a new administration mm -hmm. and the guy you've got running the fire department is actually going to leave mm -hmm. you want to start doing the work of figuring out who so that's not necessarily an unfair thing for him to badger you no it was not no it was not but at no point did the, either did they say uh, are you going to stay? Yeah. They weren't saying, they were saying, are you going to retire? Are you going to retire? Not, are you going to stay? stay? Absolutely. And yeah, so did you have a sense then of where you stood with them? Um, I didn't, no, because I was still, I didn't really want to tell them I was going to retire because if, if that might take me out of the box if they wanted to keep me. So um, I just like, I don't know yet. I always said I didn't know it. I don't know yet. Did you ever articulate to them, actually not ever, because I believe you did, later on mm -hmm. but in the summer fall of 2011 at any point when Shmuel is saying are you going to retire did you just come out and say I'd hope that it that does not happen is it is my hope that things work out no that didn't I well, never I never not? said I never said anything like that because I'm the the, the part was um he hadn't won yet. <laughs> sure, but in it's, South Bend when you win the primary you're it's, pretty, it's pretty close yeah but then I didn't I, I guess it wasn't like a one-on-one -on -one, mm -hmm. that I could say it internally. I, I didn't see. want everybody to, to listen to what I had to say, so I would never, I never did actually say anything like so that. So these conversations... was always in a group, when we was in a group setting, so something you like that. So you didn't want to broadcast yeah. your intentions to a broader group? I Absolutely. Guess. Okay. Absolutely. I think, I think that makes sense. And yeah. so um, then he wins the uh, general election. Mm -hmm. in November. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, you, you know what? I skipped one that I wanted to ask you about as well. Um, you had mentioned a Hispanic, um, I forget whether it was a chief, a chief or an His assistant chief. chief. Assistant mm -hmm. chief. Mm -hmm. um, and you said something similar about him uh, when we spoke earlier about him bringing Hispanic support. Yes, yes. He had numerous, I mean, he worked, he worked very good on, on his campaign to get a lot of Hispanic because he's a leader in the Hispanic community, and so is his uncles and cousins, and they all jumped on the bandwagon to, to assist with with uh, um, the campaign. with the campaign and getting, and especially in that community, um, they they rallied around him big time. They looked at him as a leader. As a leader, yeah, yeah. yeah. And so November comes around, general election, mm -hmm. he wins pretty handily. Yes, because this is South Bend, mm -hmm. and. In December, if I remember correctly, then they start saying seriously, okay, we're going to start talking to candidates mm -hmm. for the chief's job, mm -hmm. not just you, other people other as people. well. Yeah. So what was your, tell me about when you first found out that they were going to interview other people, how you found out the context and your thoughts about that? Well, yeah, I mean, there was, um, um, I don't know if there was a letter that came to us or a call that said anybody interested in for the to be a new chief, including me, that they would have to go through an interviewing process, which is fine. Yeah, that was good. So um, I have no idea how many other candidates that they that they talk with. I probably know two for sure, two for sure that that was up for uh, that had a, a time to um, to get an interview with them. And the one person was um, um, 
he came and he asked me, he said, I think I'm going to go for it. And I, I, I encouraged him, you should, you should, absolutely. And was this yeah. a, a white person or? Yeah, this is a white person. This is a white person. Yeah. This was the guy who eventually got the, it. Yeah, he was after eventually got it. And, um, and you yeah. told me, I think, that as soon as you knew he was interested, you thought, that's over. Yeah, exactly. I, I knew that was over because uh, Smool and him were, uh, uh, they were to, they were high school friends or uh, longtime friends. Uh, Smoo could go into his mom's kitchen and go right into the refrigerator. So, I mean, nobody can do like that, you know. But if you know that, that that's just like I, I can see the writing on the wall where they were going with that. And it was is um, I had nothing nothing wrong with it, but I just felt that the uh, there was someone more qualified to. I mean, not take anything away from him, but this other gentleman had been on the job a lot longer, a lot of uh, knowledge, and would have been just as good as a, a chief as well. In addition to you. In addition to me, saying. yeah. So yeah. you obviously had more, I shouldn't say obviously, but you know, th this person I believe had, the, the chief that he eventually chose had mm -hmm. 19 years, I think, on the mm -hmm. job. You had, I want to say, 38. Roughly. I had 30. Yeah, I had 37 at the time. 37. Yeah. And then, and so you're saying this other candidate, he also was more experienced than the one they went with. Right. He had he had a year or more to me, so he had 38 years at the time. Yeah. And so the um, the the chief that Buddha Judge picked. Mm -hmm. uh, you said that he had been childhood friends with Mike Schmuel. Mm -hmm. Really close friends to the point that, as you said, he could walk into the house without announcing himself and just go, go right to the refrigerator. help himself to yeah. the orange juice or yeah. whatever. Yeah. So no problem. I've, no, no, not what you're doing there, nothing. Just walk on in and just get what you want and go on about your business. Right, yeah. right. Hi, so, Mrs. Cunningham. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I wanted to ask if you know uh, the name Bruce Bondurant? No, I do not. So Bruce Bondurant was the stepfather um, oh, Bruce, yes, when yeah. you said it like that, yeah, Steve's yeah. father, yeah. Right. Yeah, he was on the, I, I, I knew him, uh, and I knew Steve's mom, too, when I used to work out at the Y, she would always come and talk with, we'd always, she was right. a darling. She was like, and Bruce, Bruce was on the Board of Safety at the time. He was on the Board of Public Safety, mm -hmm. which has oversight mm -hmm. of the fire department, mm -hmm. and uh, we actually obtained campaign finance filings mm -hmm. from the Buttigieg uh, campaign, and on December 14th, 2010, mm -hmm. you can see here, Bruce Bondurant mm -hmm. gave the Buttigieg campaign $500. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And approximately one year later, named his stepson to be the fire chief. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that, that, I understand that because uh, him and his wife, uh, Fred, I mean, Bruce and his wife had a, a campaign at their house. They had a, a, fundraiser. a fundraiser at their house. Yeah. When so was that? That was sometime before the uh, uh, the election. Before yeah. the general or the before primary? The primary. No, the general. The general election. Okay. The general election. Right. Yeah. 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 This yeah. would have been even before he announced his campaign. Yeah. This was December two thousand ten. Oh, okay. Okay. Right. Yeah. But um, they did. They did have a rally for a, a fundraiser at their house. Yeah. But you don't remember the specific time or anything? Mm, I just, I think it, no, it was, it was pretty much after, after the election. It was the fall, it was for, before the fall election. I'm and, pretty sure about that. And during the interview process, we're now in December of 2011, mm -hmm. you did articulate either to Shmuel or Buttigieg, you tell me which, yes, I actually do want to stay, I want to be considered, I want to be interviewed, my preference is to stay on. Is that roughly right? Absolutely, yeah. Even in the interview, they uh, that was very very clear to them that I because both of them were there in the interview process. Mike Schmuel and Putin. Yeah, and Buddha, yeah, they were both there, and um, you know I told them, yeah, if you keep me, if you if you choose me as being chief, I will stay. But I mean, but if you do not choose me, yeah, I will just go fulfill and go on with my retirement. Yeah. And did you get a sense during the interview or at any other time of? Uh, Buttigieg or Shmuel expressing dissatisfaction with how you were running the department or where you wanted to take it? No. Mm -mm. They were pretty much praising me for, for the things that I had done so thus far as being uh, the fire chief for the South Bend Fire Department. They couldn't, I mean, they didn't say anything negative. It's like, well, what about this? What about that? No. Everything was all a positive. I mean, nothing negative. And three yeah. months prior to that, 
you had been named oh, uh, the state fire chief of the year. You had yeah. been named Indiana, Indiana state, state, state fire, fire chief of the, of the year. year. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and so when they, so when the new year begins, he takes office on January 1st. Mm -hmm. And on that day, it's announced, mm -hmm. or at least that's the first time I'm aware of it being public, that you will be retiring at the beginning of February mm -hmm. and uh, Steve Cox will be replacing you mm -hmm. as chief. Mm -hmm. So when did you find out that you were not going to be picked to stay on? Um, it was sometime, I think, right before Christmas, after Christmas or something, I can't remember. But they informed me that they, 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 um, they were going to keep me as fire chief. And I was like, okay. So, yeah, it was, yeah. When you say, I was like, okay, mm -hmm. I'm imagining that's how you expressed it to them. But what was your internal response to that? Well, I already knew. You know, when, when he told me he was going to put in for it, I already knew who it, what, the, what it was. So I had already, all that hardship was over already. And I was okay with it. There was, I mean, nothing I could do about it, <laughs> so, but right. that's who they chose, and it's okay. I mean, that's, that's the nature of the game. When, you, when you're up in the high rankings, uh, you, know, you can get a call from the mayor any time. Uh, you're sure. not chief no more, so, hey, I can't. It's not I'm that I lost my job. I mean, I could, could, I could have continued to stay as a firefighter, but right. because um, he, Steve might have, he might have kept me as a chief in some part of it, maybe not, maybe so, but it just felt like, you know, it's, it's time for me to just go. And, and and for that part, it'll still be good because a lot of time when you get up in a position, even if the chief, you have, you know, some people might come to you instead of going to him, and he could find some friction. You know, and I would like, you know, so it, it was probably best that, that I go. I, I had no problem with Steve. I mean, I promoted him to, he was my assistant chief for EMS. He did an excellent job for me. I had no problem with that, you know, but um, that's just the way that it goes. So, yeah. You said, you said I... I I found this in um, some of the some of the coverage in the local newspaper, the South Bend Tribune, mm -hmm. around January, February, two thousand twelve. Um, spoke sort of innocuously of your retirement, as if there had been uh, no interest in staying on, as mm -hmm. if there had been no uh, interest in the. In other words, it, it made it seem as though. You had said you're retiring, and therefore Pete Buttigieg would have to find someone to replace you. Yeah, yeah. That, I had got sense of that, too. Matter of fact, I heard a lot of people said that he made me resign, and that wasn't true either. Um, no, the part of it was, that's why I took my, my, that's why I chose my retirement for February instead right. of January for that reason, that right. whatever, whoever the mayor would be right. uh, that might consider keeping me right. instead of being, well, you shouldn't retire, you're gone, and, you know, so, um, so that, no, that was not true. Right. That was not true. Right, and it did make it seem as though, in other words, without Buttigieg having to be public mm -hmm. about the fact that he chose to go in a different direction, mm -hmm. that meant there was no accountability for that decision making. Mm -hmm. The black community did not have an opportunity, for instance, to say, explain to us mm -hmm. your reasoning mm -hmm. in removing the Indiana State Fire Chief of the Year and replacing him not with uh, another non-white candidate mm -hmm. who was also qualified, but an even slightly less qualified or less experienced, mm -hmm. I should say, mm -hmm. white candidate, who, by the way, is the stepson of your donor, your donors, one of your mm -hmm. big Republican donors, mm -hmm and the childhood friend of your campaign manager. Mm -hmm. He did not have to publicly answer questions along those lines. No. And as you say, it's his prerogative to make that decision, mm -hmm. but, but did you have any thought about the fact that he, that no one had enough information to hold him accountable for those specifics about it? Hmm. I, I, no, I, no, there was no one that could, could to do the account, of, account they make them account of, uh, accountable for it, but you know it's just uh, like because they didn't know about they it. didn't know about it. Plus, that's the way the the politics run. When new mayor knew everything changes as being a new mayor, so I think a lot of people were disappointed that I wasn't kept. But again, nothing came to the table about it, or you know, 
or, or made a big squirrel about it or anything. Did any of the local media ask you, why have you chosen to stay on? Why not stick around? No. Nobody ever said anything until Daryl's situation came at hand. And then they started recognizing, well, wait, 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 wait. The black fire chief's gone? Now the, the black police chief is gone? Well, wait a minute, what's going on? And I did have one reporter, not only that, he tried to, he really wanted, he was trying to get me to um, throw Pete under the bus. But the part that I gave him was that he has a right to choose and let people go as he wants, as a mayor. Of course. He has that. Yeah. And, well, he thought, well, shouldn't he have, uh, shouldn't he have kept him? I, I can't answer that question. I said, this like, um, um, he has the right to change it. Now, I will say how he did it might have been a problem because if he didn't want to keep him, he could have did that in January. If he, he didn't, didn't want to keep Chief Borkins. If he, didn't, if he didn't want to keep Chief Borkins, he could have done it. He could have done that in January if it was just if that if he was trying to get rid of him, or he didn't want him to be chief. Um, but he chose to wait till right after I retired, and then all of a sudden. Here he comes and goes. And, and your specifics, the specifics about your situation aside, mm -hmm. and the specifics of Daryl Boykin's situation aside, together, along with uh, Licky's assistant, Lynn Coleman, yes. mm -hmm. and this was cited in Daryl Boykin's lawsuit, together, it looked like a pattern. Mm -hmm. and, and you told me um, earlier, when we spoke before, you said that Buttigieg led you to believe that there would be minority representation in his administration. Yeah, I mean, all through his campaign and everything, you would, you would, you, you. He didn't say it, but you, he led us to think like things were going to keep moving the way they are. The structure was going to probably stay the way they are. So you know, when you when you have black black people in leadership, you think, may well, it's not going to. Maybe it's not me. Maybe not Daryl. But it could be another person in leadership that could take that. They take those positions, or even Lynn. Um, maybe he he would have a, it, he didn't have to have another uh, mayor's assistant. He could have made him a deputy assistant or something. But we would still have someone um, uh, African American somewhere up in his administration somewhere that you know when I have a problem and I need to talk to somebody that can make a decision. Um, that they could help or assist in helping. And in the part that, that um, each mayor, it seemed like, always had someone a minority-wise that you could relate to if the situation came. If a Hispanic person wanted to talk somebody with them, they were somebody they could go to, talk to, take it to the mayor, they would hash it out or whatever they needed to do, try to fix the problem if it was fix it, fixable. And that's the way it's pretty much been, as, as I remember, all, all the time in the leadership role, each mayor has something like that. So in my mind, I was thinking that, yeah, there was going to be another black person take Lynn's position if he didn't keep Lynn, uh, take my position, and, you know, put someone else in there somewhere, uh, or, and, and, and even Daryl's if he didn't keep him. Um, but when he, 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 he didn't choose me and he kept Daryl, that was great. I said, okay, we still have a... a uh, uh, African American fi uh, police chief was was good, and not showing what was Lynn going to be. He never said anything, so Lynn was just like, "Well, we're, you know, where are we at with that?" You know, hopefully that was that was going to stay the same until we finally found out that you know they never said anything to Lynn. He was just going to work normally, but the transition they didn't ask him or anything. They just let him keep coming to Lynn. Like, hold up, wait a minute. What are we doing here? I mean, am I supposed to be here? Not supposed to be here? You, you, you know, you're not telling me anything. You're saying this is what Lynn Coleman said to them? Yes. Hello? Yeah. Yeah, we've been here. I mean, what, what are we doing here? You know, you're not saying anything. Being, I mean, just, I mean, it. it like you walk by and don't even speak. Like, am I supposed to be here or not supposed to be here? Or what am I supposed to be doing here? The guards are still letting me in downstairs. Yeah. So yeah. maybe I ought to be doing something? Yeah. Or what am I supposed to be doing? Or, or, or are you ask, going to ask me any questions of the transition part? You know, normally when somebody takes this or what, and I guess they didn't want any of that. And they just finally told him, no, we're not going to keep you and this and that. But he, his thought was, how long was I going to go go through this before they actually said, hey, what are you doing? You know, if he hadn't uh, spoken up, you know, so. So not yeah. only uh, when when he and others showed up for mm -hmm. work after mm -hmm. January 1st, 2012, not only were they not being given 
new assignments, new portfolios. Mm -hmm. They were essentially being ignored in that respect. Mm -hmm. And you're saying on top of that, no one ever said to them, um, we're bringing in new people. Mm -hmm. And so before you leave, we're, we're going to ask you to leave. Mm -hmm. Before you leave, we want to get the benefit of your institutional knowledge, mm -hmm. know what, what things you have in your pipeline so that we can ensure a smooth transition. You're saying none of that even happened. None of that happened. None of that happened. And the only yeah. time that they were actually told, oh, by the way, you should probably stop coming to work, is when they themselves went to the new Buttigieg administration and said, mm -hmm. should I still be here? Yeah. Like, you know, no memo, no email, no phone call, nothing. I mean, it was... Until would, they forced the issue. Until they forced the issue. And when was that? Do you have a sense of that? I do not. I do not know. Were you still a uh, fire chief? when that played out? Mm, yeah, because I was still the fire chief for the whole month of January. Right. Yeah, but I was still, in uh, February 1st, we had um, the first time we ever had the changing of the guard, no, changing of command, I should say, changing of command. It's like um, after I did mine, I, I gave command to Pete, and then Pete gave command to Steve. That had never happened ever before. Yeah, that was pretty cool. And, right, right. I think I saw a picture of it in the in a back issue of the yeah. Tribune. Yeah. Um, and uh, during the campaign, going back just a little bit now, you spoke a little bit about Buttigieg being happy with the direction you were taking the department. Mm -hmm. Did he ever speak about a new, wanting a new direction for the department? No. No, is he it, did not. Is it possible that he's spoke along those lines to others? It's possible. It's very possible. He didn't. He didn't give me an indication that. Um, well, if I did this, well, how would you feel? You know. I mean, I. I, I think I was very, very clear in telling him. You know, like um, I know, this is the way that Steve did it, and this is the way how he wanted it. I, I followed his plan. If you have a plan that I should be following, if I become your fire Steve chief, Lickie, yeah, the previous mayor, the previous mayor. Yeah. And I said, if there's a plan if, that you know that I can, I have, I have no problem with running it. However, you you want to foresee to to it to go. You know, I'm I'm flexible on all ends. Uh, I'm not hard to get along with. Uh, you know, and I'm easy to follow. Um, and I have no problem with that. And when yeah. you talked about here's here are the unachieved things and the aspirations that I have for the department. Mm -hmm. It's not like he turned up his nose and said, "Really? That you think that's the way to go?" Was there any pushback on that? No, end? no. Mm -mm. Everything all, was good. Everything I mean, was good. everything was good. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Everything was good. And so, yeah. So now let's um, let's talk about Daryl Boykins. Okay. So you had said earlier that uh, when it appeared that he was keeping Chief mm -hmm. Boykins, mm -hmm. you thought, "Okay, maybe I'm one of the players who gets taken out of the musical chairs mm -hmm. game." But it appears that there's still going to be the, roughly the same number of people of color, black people, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. playing. Yes. Maybe some yeah. of them will be in different chairs yeah. when the music stops, whatever. Mm -hmm. And then so when Boykins is demoted, mm -hmm. that changed that for you? That changed everything. Yeah. Tell me. That changed everything. Um, after, I mean, the whole community was in an uproar. I mean, how, how he, he wanted him to resign and then he fired him. and. And, and everything and, and um, Daryl, you all right? He said, Howard. He said they didn't even let me explain nothing. I said, What do you mean? Just two sides. He said, No, it was one side. I said, One side. He said, I said they didn't ask you what happened, how it happened. No, they said out, out. You're out. You're out. I said, Out. Who does that? <laughs> I'm like, I said that's not right. And we're talking that's not right. time frame wise. We're now we're talking about approximately March 30th, 2012. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So yeah. he's saying on March 30th that he was given no chance or no time to explain. No time to explain. They didn't want to hear any explanation, nothing. All they just said, you know, you're out, you're done. You're Based done. on the allegations that the federal officials had shared with them. Yes. Supposedly and, they had shared with right. them. Right. Yeah. So we actually reported back in September last year mm -hmm. that that there was a, a deposition given by Mike Schmuel mm -hmm. in which he testified that two of the cops came to him on, on or around January 18th and laid all of this out. Mm -hmm. Now, if Schmuel is telling the truth, and there's, he was under oath, there's, mm -hmm. there's no indication he wasn't telling the truth, that would mean that the 
Buttigieg administration had the remainder, almost two weeks of that January, all of February, and all of March until March 23rd when that meeting with the prosecutors had. They had all of that time mm. to speak with Daryl Boykins. Daryl Boykins, yeah. So you're suggesting that at no point during that period did they reach out to Chief Boykins and say, we appear to have a situation. Can you tell us what your perspective is on this? Yeah, didn't happen. Didn't happen. And, and that's the part that puzzles me the most is because they had the information. They could have, what, what is this? To explain this. They had a time to explain it. They had a time to investigate it and, and everything. Um, but the part that puzzles me the most is that the feds don't, how you say, um, they don't ask you to, um, if I give you, if, I, if, if you do this, we won't do that. They don't play like that. It's not the Federal Bureau of Personnel Changes. No, they don't do that. They don't do that. So the part puzzle me, like, say, that, well, if, if you get rid of them, then this will all go away. And nothing. No, no, they don't do that. If there was a problem, if there was a serious problem, the Fed would have been in here. They would have took records, people, and they would have been a whole, whole entire investigation going on. That did not happen. Not a long history of them going to Don Corleone and saying, you know what? This sunny character is out of line. Yeah. Maybe kick him out of the Corleone family and yeah. and then we're square. We're square, yeah. No, that, that's a, that the fans don't work like that. They don't work like that. And plus they they are if they on you about something, they'll come in and do what they have to do and regardless, I don't care if you fire him or not, it doesn't matter. This is what we're gonna do. This is what we're gonna do. We're gonna follow through and take care of everything. Now but, now the Associated Press, um, they got from you a a re pretty remarkable story, mm -hmm. which was as the Boykins thing was playing out, or, or possibly in the aftermath, mm -hmm. Buttigieg then reached out to you. He did, yeah. Tell me what he, he called and we talked. I said, yeah, How you doing? I said, I'm good. How are you coming along? And he said, Oh, this, this, this Daryl thing has got me. I said, Yeah. He said, Can we meet for breakfast? I said, Sure, when? What was this time frame? Would this have been early April? Mm. Something like, Yeah, I think it was. It was, yeah, some early April. I can't tell you the date. Um, Before Karen DePape was fired? Yeah, nobody was fired yet. Nobody was fired. Not yet. even Boykins? Boy, well, do, yeah, it, Boykins but, had been demoted from chief. Yeah, he'd been demoted. Well, okay. well, wait, 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 wait. That's when he resigned. He took, and then he, right. he, he, he uh, res he's rescinded his, right. and then he was back. So I, right. I don't know where so that So then it's went. probably around late March if it's before he was actually demoted. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so I'm sorry yeah. to interrupt. Yeah. You said that Buttigieg called you. Go yeah. Take it from so, so we met at, uh, at a restaurant, and, um, I, you know, we see, it's just, I was there just to listen and see what I, I, how, you know, what, I, what, he, what he was actually looking for me to do or help him in kind of way. And he said, this, this, is, this is a mess. And, excuse me, and he said that um, this Daryl in the feds, I just, I just don't know how I'm going to get through this or helping us. And I, and I asked him, I said, well, my thought is if the feds had told you that, you didn't get your get out of car job, you didn't get your get out of car job free. And he looked your get at out of jail card. Yeah, right, get out right, of jail right. card. Okay. Meaning that if the feds had told you this is what you had to do, right. you should have got it in writing. And all this stuff would go away. You wouldn't even have anybody saying it because you could just show them here. This is a document. This right. see this. This is all. Of, this this is showing. This is what I had to do. And this right. is why I had to do it. He said that didn't happen. I said that didn't happen. Meaning they didn't give him something in writing. They didn't give him. He didn't ask for anything in writing. That was the part. No, I didn't. I didn't get that in writing. I said, well, there's your downfall there. I said, but this other part that everybody is really hounding you about because you don't have any black leadership. I said, you let us all to believe that it was probably going to stay the same way it was when Steve Lickey was mayor, that there was going to be some, 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 some African-American leadership somewhere in your, in your administration, and right now we don't see that. I said, if a Hispanic man, a person, want to go talk to somebody, in, a Hispanic, in leadership that can make a decision, not to somebody just that can make a decision, who are they going to talk to? And his head kind of... I said, if a black man want to go talk to somebody, his head, his head kind of went. He kind of, you know, kind of went down, like, yeah, all right, yeah. And then when I said, if a black man wanted to, what, you know, and his head then went down again. I said, there's no leadership. How come? How come? You let us to believe this is the way it's going to be, and we have nothing. There's no, you know, there's no leadership. Uh, and he didn't say that I'm gonna change it. I'm gonna do it. He just, yeah. So 
I guess, well, we don't want to talk about that anymore. <laughs> so um, pretty much after that, we just start talking general stuff, you know. And How about those uh, Mets? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, pretty much so, pretty much so. It's pretty much so. I, I, and and it's just, just unbelievable that as you look back, as I look back at his whole administration, out of all the four years, I mean, the eight years that he was there, I mean, uh, still nothing changed. No black leadership. Well, one black female leadership when she was his assist as a uh, attorney, but the, this is the city's corporate council. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he endorsed Karima Fowler for city clerk. She won that position. Well, That's she, an elected position. She was elected. That was elected position. That right. wasn't un, that wasn't under his administration. That's not an appointment. Yeah, it's not an right. appointment. Yeah. No, um, but so. Uh, I, I know we just went through the, the specific timing. You said that when you had lunch with Buttigieg, that was breakfast. Breakfast, breakfast I apologize. Mm -hmm. uh, you had breakfast with Buttigieg, and that was after Boykins had rescinded his uh, resignation, mm -hmm. but before Buttigieg said, well, in that case, I'm demoting you? No. That all that had taken place. Okay. If I'm not right. Yeah, all that has taken place. I mean, yeah, because everybody is all over him now because right. he, had, he had actually let him go um, after, or demoted him, I should say, because he didn't fire him. He couldn't fire him. He just could take him out of that position. Right. The Board of Public Safety has to, they have oversight over some of those personnel things. That, uh, yeah, over that. Yeah. Right. I mean, right. but, but the it, mayor can make changes in those upper he, ranks. Yeah, he can, he can make changes. I mean, just like if I stayed, I mean, I wouldn't have been a chief. I could have got on a fire truck. And just like Daryl, you know, he's still, they can only demote him to his last least position that he had, and that right. was a captain. Right. And so, so that's what they did. So I, you may not be aware of this, but in the, in the Shmuel deposition that we reported on last September, mm -hmm. Shmuel testified that in their March 23rd meeting with the federal prosecutors, uh, with the FBI, with the U.S. Attorney for the Northern District, they were told, the city, Shmuel, the city attorneys, they were told by the feds, you've got 60 days to get this stuff in order. Mm -hmm. Your conversation with Buttigieg was approximately one to two weeks after that, mm -hmm. which means they still had mm -hmm. several weeks mm -hmm. in that window. So in theory, could they not have gone back to the feds in that window and said, you know what, Howard Buchanan made a great point. We, I'd like my get out of jail car, uh, free card. I'd like something in writing mm -hmm. saying that I need to remove this chief. Could he could he not have done that? He could have. Yeah. But why would the feds tell him they the feds couldn't tell him? I don't care what you do. With you that way. I mean, they that wouldn't have uh, changed anything. And what, what I'm trying to say is uh, if the feds had told him, give my get out of card free free, like, hey, look here, um, you telling me I got to. Well, they didn't tell him that they had to fire him. In other words, we now know, according to that deposition, they didn't even tell him verbally. Verbally, nothing. So, yeah. of course, they wouldn't put it in writing yeah. if they yeah. weren't. I see what you're yes. saying. Yes, 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 yes. That's right. why I said, if they had told you that. Right. Yeah. Right. And Buttigieg has said in the past, before this deposition, before we reported on the contents of this deposition, mm -hmm. Buttigieg has said that the message came through thinly veiled, but very clear. Mm. And now it seems maybe less clear and maybe more veiled. As well, it yeah, yeah, yeah. But, you know, 60 days, they could have done another investigation in 60 days to find out what was really wrong, what's the truth. But they never talked with Daryl. How could that be? There's two sides to everything. I don't care what you do. There's another side to this. But they never talked to him. How come? Well, I wasn't there at the time, so I'm curious... <laughs> <laughs> I'm curious what your thoughts are on, on how come. Well, because they were wrong, that's why. In what, wrong to do what? It, it, they were wrong in the way, the, how they preceded everything. I mean, as, as being a mayor, as, uh, the, uh, being a mayor and, a, and, and also chief of staff, you, where's your leadership skills are? I mean, how come you didn't say, okay, Daryl, what actually happened? And how can we fix this? What happened? What went wrong? Versus you're out, you're gone. We're not going to. We're not even going to talk to you. We're just going to move on. How? That's why I say if he didn't want him, he should have did that in the beginning before all this even happened. It didn't. It didn't matter. But you, what's fair and what's right, 
You give a person an opportunity to explain exactly what went wrong. How did this happen? Where did it happen? When did this go wrong? When did you find out? How come you didn't tell me about it? You know, why didn't you tell me? Well, I, I was going to, but da da da. You know, there's something else that could have been wrong with it. But just to don't ask, the, don't give a man an opportunity to explain himself. I don't feel that's right. That's not just. That's not. That's not good justice to me. I mean, because he has a story to tell, and they didn't want to hear it. How come? How come? Why? Why? I, I don't. I still can't get that in my head. Why? Well. Um, in September, we reported that the documents about the secret police tapes mm -hmm. describe conversations that police, white police officers, mm -hmm. were having with some of Buttigieg's top donors, including his campaign finance chairman, mm -hmm. in which they uh, apparently, according to these documents, tried to urge that donor to get Buttigieg to get rid of Boykins. Mm. But it also sounds like you're saying that there's a, sort of a parallel in that in both your case and in Daryl Boykins's case, the mayor had a right to make the changes he wanted to make for the leadership ranks of his administration. Absolutely. But the way it was done in both cases, it sounds like you're saying, but tell me if I'm wrong, the way it was done meant that he didn't have to he couldn't be held accountable for having wanted to make those changes. Mm -hmm. Is that is that do I am I picking up on that? Yeah, that's that's pretty much right. Yeah, yeah. I um I want to read you something that was uh, written in the Tribune at the end of Buttigieg's first year in office. They mm -hmm. were doing sort of a year-end review of his first year in office, mm -hmm. and they referred to. Uh, the demotion of Boykins, mm -hmm. and they referred to your departure, mm -hmm. and they said, these decisions and some others have led to accusations that your administration does not value diversity or is not sufficiently diverse. How do you respond to that? And Buttigieg said, quote, I think the suggestion that my administration isn't committed to diversity is outrageous. <laughs> So what does diversity mean to him? Well, <laughs> I, guess, I guess we don't think the same thing with diversity then. Well, let me, uh, I'll read the rest of what he okay. had to say. All right. um, he says, I think if you look at a lot of the key divisions and appointments we've made, appointments to positions of responsibility, including the Board of Public Works, the Housing Authority, the Board of Health, you'll see that minorities are better represented among those appointments than they are in the community at large. At the end of the day, I have to make decisions in hiring that are best for the city Diversity is a part of that, there is no question, and I continue to want to assemble as diverse a team as possible, and I acknowledge that we can grow in that direction, but the suggestion that I don't consider diversity important is completely wrong. Wow. I don't get that. Because? Because diversity to me is like when you look at his administration, when they stand there, you have some... some a mixture of Hispanics and blacks that that's all through his all the head some type of some head position a head uh, somewhere in there leadership decision-making roles absolutely not just to be there but if I come to you I can do this but I have to make a call for a uh, phone call to the mayor like yeah no we're gonna do it like this and move on yeah something that can make some decisions yeah at the department head when you go down to the department's head I don't see one and you did not at the time. I did not at the time, except for the attorney. Corporate counsel, you yeah. mentioned, I think mm -hmm. that was 2013. Right, maybe. right. His second year yeah. in office. Yeah, but other than that, I don't see anybody that can make a decision that a department head. I don't, not, there's not one in his department head. Did you speak with yeah. Buttigieg again after that breakfast about Boygans? Not, not on that level. I think when I did see him, hi, how you doing? I think he might have came to our church or something and just, you know, something... Just hi, how you doing? Good. Yeah, good to see you. And just yeah, cordial and keep going. Yeah. Is there anything that we haven't covered or have that you want to flesh out a little bit more? Anything else you'd like to add to the conversation before we go? No, I just, I just, uh, him, him running for president. I, I don't. I think it's a good thing. I mean, he's smart. I can't take anything away from him. He, he's smart in that. But I, the the fear that I have, and I think 
and I, this is from my heart, and I could be totally wrong, but this is from the outside looking in. If he does become a president, what would his administration look like? Because if it's anything the way he has in South Bend, I don't see any black person in uh, being ahead of anything. Just because of the way he did, and the part that I that I say that because he had a chance to ch he had a he could chose he could have chose to change it, he could have changed anything, and he chose not to. This was his choice. He could have chosen, but I guess that's what he feel that it, he can move on just the way like this. But now I think it's haunting him, because when you go back and everybody go back and look at his administration and start looking for a. Uh, 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 a department head or somebody uh, Hispanic that's a head of something or a black person ahead of something except for the and, and it's not there I don't see it now maybe that's a good thing for some people but I just feel that that's diversity to me when you look over your administration and you see all different types of, of human beings in your administration somewhere with leadership it's in a leadership role if someone needs to go talk to you on a personal basis because I don't want to talk to a white person, I want to talk to a black person that I can relate to better, that I can talk to and ask a question that can make a decision, not just, okay, I'll take your information and we'll get back with you. Once they go and check with a white person. Once they go check with a white person, yeah. That's no good. That's not good. And the last few administration had someone to do that. And it was, it was I mean, the city thrived. But not to say that the city didn't do good, I can't say that. But, you know, when you sit back and the diverse, and that's why so many, uh, his, uh, I can't say the Hispanics, there's just some that thought that he should, he could have done better. But then again, a lot of blacks are just, just like, I can't believe it happened like this. Why? Well, you know, they were down. Why did he, why did he take you? You were doing good. You did this. Why were you going to say, but that's the nature of the beast. I mean, I tell everybody, they could give me a call in the middle of the night. How are you not chief no more? I said, okay, I'm not chief no more. I doesn't mean I lose my job, but I'm, I'm just not a leadership. That's all right. And I can continue on, but that's just the way it is at the top. So, but my career was good. I had a great career. Nothing further wrong with that. Happy one, good one. Uh, it, everything turned out swell for me. And I'm just, you know, just thank God that everything was good for me. When, when that was over, another door opened and I'm still moving on. So. Everything's good for me. Nothing and you to and you put in almost four decades in a in an at times very dangerous yeah. position. You came out with your health. Yes. So far so good. <laughs> so far so good. Yeah. Bobby Cannon, thanks so much for speaking to oh, you. Oh my pleasure, Jonathan. Anything. Thank God you. Bless. Yeah. I'm Jonathan Larson for TYT Investigates. Thanks for watching.